Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Moments after a deadly home invasion, a woman is arrested parked in a car just a block away. What's her relationship to this case? We'll have the latest from Warren Police. It is all working in our favor tonight. Blue skies, low humidities and normal highs. We'll see if we can keep it going for the weekend. OK, Ben, but we begin with outrage growing in Wyandotte. An elementary school volunteer charged with 15 sex crimes. And now we're learning about potential warning signs the district missed before hiring him. Thanks for joining us at five. We start with that in a letter to parents. Monroe Elementary's principal says Michael Beebe was never alone with children in his time as a volunteer, and none of those alleged crimes happened on school property. That comes as little comfort, though, to parents. As we've learned, Beebe has a lengthy criminal history. Let's bring in Sean Lay live with what he's uncovered and uh, what the district has to say about all of this, Sean. Well, these parent volunteers, they're called hallway heroes. The program is called Dads of Great Students. Here's what we know. Superintendent telling me today that volunteer Michael Beebe was given a yearly background check, and the superintendent says the background check showed no red flags. We found here at Local 4 that Beebe has a long criminal history. Tonight, parents in Wyandotte are absolutely distraught over this. They're calling for the superintendent and the principal at that school to step down. You sat here and let a sex offender, over 500 students here, and let him into the school. They need to be fired. They don't need a job. Calls tonight for the superintendent of Wyandotte Public Schools, Dr. Katherine Cost, and James Monroe Elementary Principal Vicki Wilson to step down. After a long time, dads of great students, parent volunteer at Monroe Elementary and convicted felon, Michael Beebe, has now been arrested on 15 charges related to sex crimes against children. They need to quit their job. You put our kids in debt jeopardy. You were supposed to take care of them, and you didn't. A parent of a child came forward back in May to say her daughter had been abused. Wyandotte police investigated, raiding BB's home, taking him into custody on July 25th. Parents say there were red flags about BB that they say the principal was warned about. Parents say BB hosted sleepovers, took kids to Tigers game. This mom says she's learning just now that her daughter went to a girls only Valentine's Day lunch at school hosted by BB. There was only certain girls that were picked. There was a head count of girls that were picked to go to this pizza party. He offered them some candy. She chose not to take it. The district says BB passed a criminal background check. We found that BB has a long criminal history from the 1990s, where he did prison time for felony home invasion, breaking and entering, and attempted escape. When pressed on the background check, Superintendent Cost tells us the district knew of BB's criminal history, writing, quote, there is an appeal process where considerations are given to when incidents occurred, the nature of the incident, what has been done since that time, and what circumstances have changed. All of these factors are considered when making a final decision. This mom says she had to tell BB at school to stop touching her children. I had to tell her to back off several times in the store, at the school a couple times. And for the district to completely ignore this is completely unacceptable. We're live tonight now and talking to parents all morning and mid afternoon in Wyandotte. They told us they have not heard one word from the district or the school about this. And while we're there, the district put out a statement and then the principal put out a very long letter in part. The principal saying tonight, quote, I wish we were I wish I were a superhero that could rid the world of danger and save the community from this heartache. That's Principal Vicki Wilson. Dr. Catherine Yost, the superintendent, says, quote, the alleged offenses did not happen on campus. The parent has also not volunteered in our schools for over a year. Even that statement parents are taking issue with. They know this volunteer very, very well. They believe he was volunteering up until this past May. Back to you guys. Sean, do police believe that there are more victims? Police in Wyandotte are saying, look, talk to your kids. If there are more victims, we need to hear from you to come forward. We talked to at least 15 to 20 different parents that said this morning when they started getting word of this, they had that very difficult conversation with eight, nine and 10 year olds who go to that school. Others are having that conversation again tonight to make sure that they're OK. Yeah. All right, Sean. 
Developing right now, a 32 year old woman is in critical condition after a near drowning in Saline. This is new video from Sky 4 showing investigators putting up crime scene tape at Mill Pond Park. We're told paramedics have taken the woman to St. Joseph Mercy Hospital in Ann Arbor. Police say she was swimming when she went under and needed to be rescued. We have a crew headed to that scene and we'll continue to follow this developing story. Our other top story tonight, brand new clues into a deadly shooting overnight in Warren. Initially, this seemed like a random home invasion that led to the shooting at the home on Blank Drive near 13 Mile in Hoover. But now police think there's much more to this story. As Priya Mann reports, police think this wasn't random at all. Police have a lot of questions about the victim story in this deadly shooting. Neighbors say they often saw the parents sitting on the porch and the two kids playing basketball in the driveway. All four were asleep upstairs when shots were fired on the main floor. This has never happened in our neighborhood. I just saw them the other day. The, the boys are playing. Neighbors were stunned to see crime scene tape surrounding this home on a quiet street in Warren. Very troublesome to have someone shot in your neighborhood. Around 2.30 Friday morning, police say a 26-year-old Detroit man got into the home through a rear window. He went straight to the first floor bedroom of his target, a 20 year old man. The victim says that's when he was confronted by the suspect having two semi automatic weapons, one in each hand, which we question. Warren police have doubts about the victim's version of events, but when it was over, the intruder was dead and the victim was also shot. Upstairs, a couple and two kids, just 11 and 13 years old, were sleeping when bullets started flying. Terrible terrible. We have children too. It's just it's just an awful thing. Oh, it's terrible to, to have to live like that, you know, and now they're going to probably be scared the rest for a long time anyway. Just a block away, Warren police found a woman waiting in a car. Did question her and she says, well, she's going to a home in Roseville and her statements that she made didn't make sense. So we brought her in. Police believe she knows the intended target. They're investigating if the motive for the home invasion involved drugs or stemmed from a relationship. She remains in custody. But the whole thing is unsettling. It's just, it's, it's tragic. And again, Warren police want to reassure the folks who live in that neighborhood. This was not a random shooting. In fact, these three people knew one another. That gunman who was killed and the victim inside his home who was shot both have extensive records, including for drugs and weapons offenses. Reporting live, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Given that, Priya, any previous encounters with police at that home before? Yeah, just in May, neighbors say that police were called there. Police say because the victim in this case allegedly held his girlfriend at gunpoint. He's awaiting trial for that investigation. Meanwhile, police say he was on parole. So if investigators determine he did, in fact, have a weapon, he could be facing charges for that as well. Yeah. Send it back All right, Priya, thanks. All right, uh, heading into the weekend, and the weather is going to be fabulous. A whole lot of blue skies. But you're going to see nothing but orange barrels out on the roads. <laughs> stuff on the right is ruining the stuff on the left. That's right. We'll, we'll break down the construction chaos coming up in just a minute. Yeah, let's start with the good stuff. And uh, for that, we turn to Ben. Gorgeous out there, Mr. Bailey. Yes, for once, I'm not the worst part of that traffic weather combo. And I'm very thankful for that. Temperatures right now, right around average, a little bit cooler even in some spots. Wind is out of the northwest. Humidity is low. It is a very comfortable afternoon. And that's going to continue through tonight and right through the weekend as well. Saturday 82. We're going to 84 on Sunday. Still no humidity problems through the weekend. Still no rain. And I know a lot of us are looking for a drop. So we'll go hunting through the seven day forecast to see when our next chance of showers shows up in just a few minutes. Kim. Okay, Ben. Well, here's the construction we were talking about. Brace yourselves because I-75, the commute, is about to get worse. Crews are gearing up for round three of the massive I-75 rebuild in Oakland County. And that's not all. Kim DiGiulio joins us with what you need to know to get around this weekend. Kim. We are in the thick of construction season right now. We are used to seeing many of the orange barrels around all of our freeways around Metro Detroit. But this weekend, there's multiple closures that you need to know about. We're coming up on another weekend with major freeway closures. Eastbound I-696 will be closed from I-75 to I-94 for sewer work. Crews will be preparing pipes to make sure the freeway drains properly. Eastbound I-696 closes at 8 o'clock tonight and reopens by 5 a.m. on Monday morning. Prepare for backups on the westbound side, too, with I-696 down to one lane from I-94 to DeQuinder. And that's not the only freeway under construction this weekend. Westbound I-94 will be closed from I-75 to I-96. 
Eastbound M5 will close from 696 to 8 Mile, and southbound Telegraph is closing from Pennsylvania to West Road. The barrels go up on all three stretches at 9 o'clock tonight and come down at 5 a.m. Monday morning. For a full listing of those closures, you can also find them on our website at clickondetroit.com. Reporting along I-75, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4.